Good evening and welcome, welcome to our service. We've had a few technical difficulties here, but I think we're working our way through them. It seems like <laughs> every time we record, something happens, and then we have somebody that says, "Hey, nothing's happened so far today," <laughs> and then the, the world caves in. <laughs> it's like talking about having a great, great dog and then having it make a mess in the living room. I don't know. It's, uh, you never say it, right? You just. You just think it, but you never say it. At any rate, we're so glad you joined us. We're so glad to have you as part of our service. And as we pray every week, we, we hope this is a, an uplifting and an encouraging a part of your week. Here's a, an oldie but goodie that Jimmy is going to lead us in. Yeah. 
In my devotions this week, I I always look for something that's going to be an encouragement to you, something that's going to lift your spirits, because I know it's hard the times that we're living in. And, and I came across something that I think will encourage you. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Psalm 12. 
Psalm chapter 12. And we're going to read the first four verses. Help, O Lord, for the godly are fast disappearing. The faithful have vanished from the earth. Neighbors lie to each other, speaking with flattering lips and deceitful hearts. May the Lord cut off their flattering lips and silence their boastful tongues. They say, we will lie in our hearts, content. Our lips are our own. Who can stop us? And as I read this during my devotions, I was thinking, we're not talking about a newspaper clipping from yesterday. We're not talking about something on our computer screens that we saw this morning when we were checking the news or on our televisions or wherever you happen to get your news. This is not something that just happened. We're talking about David and we're talking about a thousand B.C. And so we realize that nothing new. What's going on around us is nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun. And, and as I realized, um, with the evil that's all around us, the lying, the deceitfulness, everything that we see. And so many times I have said, as you have said, I have never seen anything like this in my lifetime. And that's true. This is something different than any of us have probably seen in our lifetimes. But it's nothing new. This evilness has always been. And it's going to continue until God calls us home or the rapture of the church. And once that happens, if you think things are bad now, you have no idea how bad things are going to be getting. But it's nothing new. And, and, and that was an encouragement to me to realize that this has happened throughout history. This has happened. And even though we concern ourselves with what's going on, the economy, gas prices, everything that we see, baby formula, uh, wars, rumors of wars, all these things are supposed to happen. And all these things have happened in the past. Maybe not to the same extent that we're seeing now. Different eras, different times. But troubling times have always been. The good news is that God is with us through all the troubling times, just as he was with King David through the troubling times. Turn with me, if you will, to Genesis. Go, let's go back to Genesis 6. Genesis 6. We're going to read verses 5 through 8. I'm sure this is one that you all remember. Genesis 6, 5 to 8. And the Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all of the time. The Lord regretted that he had made the human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. And so the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race. I have created, and with all the animals and the birds and the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I have made them. Verse 8. But Noah found favor in the eyes of God. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the earth being so full of evil that God could find no one worthy of saving but Noah, but one man and his family? Now, I know things are bad around us. I know we don't like the things that we see. We don't like the things that are happening. And it tends to scare us. It tends to make us worry. All the things that we're not supposed to do as children of God. We're supposed to put our trust in him. And that's easier said than done. And I know, brothers and sisters, I'm rowing that same boat. I'm always concerned about my business or my wife's business or uh, how many people are we going to reach with this ministry? You know, are we going to have 
enough funds this month to take care of the stuff in the ministry and take care of the stuff that we need to take care of with our orphanage and all that. And I'm not supposed to worry, and you're not supposed to worry. These uh, passages in the Bible are not there to scare us, they're to remind us that God has been faithful. He has been with us all of the time. And the fact that there was so much evil back in Noah's time that God could find no one on the face of the earth except one man in his family that was worthy of saving. It says a lot. Because I know right now thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of good Christian people that tune into this service every week, that turn in, tune into all of the services that are online available every week, that go to churches in this area around the world every week. And yet back in those days, things were so bad, there was nobody worth saving. And so we can take heart in the fact that we have brothers and sisters all over this world that are praying, just as we are praying, that God will come and heal this land. And lastly, God is in control. And I know I say this to you every week. And I see, just as you do, signs all around in people's yards and on billboards. God is in control. But God truly is in control. Let's turn back to Psalm 12. Turn back with me to Psalm 12 and let's go down and read verse 7 and 8. Therefore, Lord, we know you will protect. Underline that in your Bible. Highlight that in your Bible. Let's read that again. Therefore, Lord, we know you will protect the oppressed, preserving them forever from this lying generation. Even though the wicked strut about and evil is praised throughout the land. Even though evil exists, God will take care of us. God will preserve us throughout. You know, the economy looks bad. We talk about stock markets and gas prices, everything that we talk about in the economy. But you know what, brothers and sisters, you and I are living in God's economy. We are living in God's economy, and God has promised to supply our needs and many, many of our wants. God is in control, and so no matter how bad things look, none of this has taken God by surprise. You know, I was thinking as I was preparing this message in closing, <clears throat> when I was younger, I was in Scouts. And there was one summer that I remember back in Pennsylvania that I signed up and went to like four Scout camps. Regular Scout camp, and then there was an aquatic camp, and there was a, a hiker's what I don't remember, honestly, all the different camps. But I remember they were within a week or so of each other, and we... When I got to the last camp, I mean, I was a teenager, but, you know, I, I just got plain old homesick. And, and I, I got to the point that I was so depressed, I just missed my family. And I made a couple of phone calls home talking to my brother, and you weren't supposed to do that, but we snuck away and did that anyway because I was just so homesick. And my guess is that my brother probably told my parents just how homesick that I had become and that... I was kind of crying on the phone to him about how much I missed being home. And I remember that one day I got up and it was just another day and I couldn't wait for scout camp to get over with. I missed my family so bad. And then my dad drove up in the car and everything was okay. Everything was fine. My dad drove up and said, son, I know this has been tough on you. Get your things. I'm going to take you home. And that peace that I had when I saw my dad drive up and know that everything was okay and he was going to take care of me and my troubles were over because my dad was there reminds me that our troubles are over because our Heavenly Father is here with us. He sent his son to die for our sins. And as we are born-again Christians, as we are children of the Most High God, he is going to take care of us. No matter the evil that's around us, no matter the economy that's around us, no matter what happens with food prices and gas prices and baby formula and everything that you've been hearing about, 
God is in control, and God has...
Well, again, thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you for joining us. And again, we just pray each week that our music and our message is encouraging and uplifting in the, in the times that we find ourselves living. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that you love us. We thank you that your grace is like an ocean and we're all drowned in it. And Father, we need your grace so desperately right now. Father, we need you to come and touch this land and heal this land. Father, we need you in a way that we haven't needed you in a long, long time. Maybe that's your way of reminding us how dependent we are on you. And so, Father, come, guide us, lead us, and protect us. We pray in Jesus' name.